Xyz summons work just like normal. Synchro summons become even better with Pendulum Monsters. Using a Pendulum Monster as Synchro material sends it to the extra deck, so you can Pendulum Summon it again. Fusion summons using Pendulum Monsters on the field as Fusion materials will also send them to the extra deck. They'll still go to the graveyard if you use them as materials straight from your hand, though. Of course, you can always just attack with all your Pendulum Summoned monsters to score a big win. Pendulum Summons make incredible combos possible. Do some experimenting and discover new strategies for yourself. We're here with Marcello Barberi, the winner of the latest YCS in Europe, YCS London 2014. Yeah. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the booth. Thank you. We <laughs> called you the luckiest player in London. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> um, walk us through it. How was it for you? you you're at the yeah. end of Swiss, 33rd the player. The experience was amazing, yeah. yeah. I was. I just looked at the, the standings and actually some friends went to me saying, oh, I'm sorry about you, man. I was like, why? Oh, I'm 33rd. So, you know, yeah. that's the worst feeling you can have, basically. Yeah. And and did, uh, did you think that you're in? Yeah, actually, uh, it was really strange because everyone was asking me about my record, mm -hmm. which was eight wins and two draws. And everyone was telling me, oh, OK, you're fine. You're in the top yeah. card, like for sure. And I, and I was like saying, Man, I can still be 33rd. Yeah. I was saying that. <laughs> and actually, so I was quite, I mean, I'm used to um, not tilt when I have like bad experience now. So I was really not that disappointed, to be honest. Right. But still, of course, it's a really tough yeah. experience. So then, and then the, <laughs> the pairings changed, or the, pairings the, the standings changed. changed. Yeah. Suddenly, you're yeah. 32nd. Yeah. And you have to go up against Patrick exactly. Reader, yeah. the only undefeated player that weekend. He was on a roll yeah, until yeah. then. And also the champion. From yeah, London from itself. Last so yeah, he was like the in charge champion. So yeah, well, uh, how is that like? Like, are you saying okay, you won every match so far? I'm gonna knock you out. Well, actually, I I kind of got a revenge from fate because in YCS Paris, uh -huh. I was the one undefeated. I was 10-0, and then the course hit me, so I lost <laughs> in top 32. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I can return the favor. Yeah, I can return the favor. I was not the <laughs> stressed because I was like, I know what's the course. What's how does it feel? How, like? how did he feel afterward? He was like, oh, that's fair. Was fair. completely you no. Know, oh, he was really yeah. Okay. Not that happy about it. But, but you're still talking to each other. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Oh, so so. No, no, we do, we do. All right. Yeah. So um, it was the first victory at a major event for you? Yeah, it was the first one. But you came close quite a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, I, I did quite a few results. Yeah, and this year I was in top eight at Euro, so I was really close to getting there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so yeah, I'm used to a few results. What is that? Like, what does it feel like when you finally win that one? Is it like a, a weight off your shoulders? Uh, <laughs> well, I got to say, as I said, that I got used not to tilt. Mm. And so I really did a lot of work on myself. And I got to say, a lot of people also told me that when watching the finals, they could notice how I was like relaxed compared yeah. to my opponent. And I gotta say that I never think about the match I was playing. So I was never like, oh, I'm the finals, I'm in the finals. I can win a West, yes. You're like in the moment? I was in the moment, like just focusing. A an actual tip I can give to players is to cancel completely what they're writing down. What yeah. I do is after each match, I change the paper. So I, I think this is a round separated from everyone else. Yes. And that worked out for me. And after I won, I actually took almost a week to realize, I have to be honest. Like, yeah. it was really weird, but it was, yeah, yeah Because it's so much in the zone. So yeah. much in you, the, you yeah, first so have much to get focus out of the yeah. zone again and yeah, be like, exactly. oh, th yeah, this is really happening. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> actually, only the night I, I kind of realized I was like completely the same. And then around midnight or 1 a.m., I was like, <laughs> a big smile. Like this. <laughs> oh, I won. Although we, we had seen that big yeah. smile quite yeah. a few times. Up. It's, uh, it's my <laughs> one of your, your uh, telltales. Uh, yeah. People are like, oh, yeah, it's Marcello, the guy with the <laughs> big smile. Yeah. And exactly. they, they call you Il Bestio? Yeah, that's my, <laughs> my well, name. What like. is that about? Uh, I mean, <coughs> it's, it's from Italian, but it doesn't really make that sense. Like, 
best is like beast. So it's like beast, uh, the beast. Uh, that's that's what it means. But well, you but seem like a very friendly yeah, guy to it's me. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's it's not like uh, they're taking fun. Yeah, beast. No, it's kind of a taking fun. But I use that surname. It's like a uh, good player and a lot of like ill best is like In intimidation. Yeah. Intimidation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what yeah. changed for you after YCS London? Like, uh, were there more players uh, talking to you online or something like yeah, that? Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean. My phone actually died in London for <laughs> out of charge, and when I, I put the charge back, like it was so crazy, like 100 WhatsApp messages, wow, 200 Facebook messages. It wow. was it's like having a birthday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, actually, a really funny story was that uh, I have friends from Japan uh -huh. because I used to travel there, and so I had actually uh, three people um, wishing me happy birthday because they they saw everyone writing <laughs> on me, yeah, and they, it was uh, happy birthday. Was I was, uh, yeah. No, it's not my birthday. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's like the birthday as a yeah, as a exactly. major event champion. Indeed, <laughs> it's kind of a birthday of a career, like you can have and then continue, of course. Right. But yeah, uh, quite a few things changed. I mean, it's, okay, it's good. But you you're still testing with the same people, or yeah, did, your, did your preparation change? No, um, not really, actually, because um, something that really changed this year for me was actually the uh, European Championship, uh -huh. because. Um, I topped quite a few events, like I have um, six uh, premier yeah. tops now, but until the European, I had the top 32 cut, like, of uh, course. I topped five events in a row, only top 32. Oh, yeah. And only at Euros, I, I actually had to play in top 32 against the opponent to which I lost in Swiss. Yeah. So it was a really, really a pressure match. And I got to say that when I won that, like, all the pressure went away from me. I like, see. Completely. So that really helped me out. And... Now, no, I still test a lot with Joshua Smith, mm -hmm. so mostly with him, I gotta say. And then a few other friends, so Luigi Alici, so all yeah. my teammates mostly. But I gotta say, I'm, I'm not, uh, I mean, I believe in sharing the Yu-Gi-Oh, let's say, all right. All right. information, so I'm not... Cool. <laughs> well, well, then share some information with yeah. us about, <laughs> <laughs> about your deck. Yeah. You also said you're running Shadows. Yeah, this I'm weekend. running against Shadows, yeah. Why, why are you not playing Burning Abyss? Because everybody keeps telling me yeah. that Burning Abyss is the best thing. Indeed. Deck. I mean, uh, almost everyone I talked to was playing still Burning Abyss. Uh, but uh, I really, as I was saying, uh, I believe the. Uh, the I don't believe in the triangle theory many people are talking about. Yeah. Because I believe Clyburn to be by far the worst of the three decks. Okay. And um, why is that? Simply because um, while like Burning Abyss and Shadows both have a good matchup, mm -hmm. which is uh, for Shadows Burning Abyss and for Burning Abyss Clyber, Clyber instantly auto lose to Burning Abyss. Okay. So you have basically a matchup which I think it's 90% uh, a loss and that well, horrible I think. Yeah. And in general also against Shadows you have a really good game one but when you side all the eights came in, like Fairy Winds and right. MST. Yeah, there are a lot of answers against A lot Clifford, of answers, yeah. while Shadows is like a really strange deck. So there is now, because what I like about Shadows is the like range, broad range of plays you can yeah. have. And also the side deck is really it, difficult. It, it doesn't have like one particular yeah. weakness, you does can, it? No, exactly. Like you, especially now with release of the new cards, like you cannot focus on a strategy to beat Shadows. Like they have... Uh, Special summons, like, uh, I don't play artifacts, I can say that, so okay. I play the dragon version. So you have, like, the special summon, you have synchro summons, actually, you have XYZ's plays, and you have fusion. So you have, actually, three colors in your extra deck. That's pretty much. <laughs> and I just don't play Burning Abyss because mainly of the mirror match. Also, other famous players, like Patrick Copan, too, which no. is, though, running it, admits that the mirror match is a flip coin. Mm. And I don't want to feel like that because while the Shadow Mirror match is by far the most skillful one. Yeah. So I feel like when you're going up yeah. against another Shadow player, exactly. you feel like I feel like you can. Beat I may them. be the most of the time the best player uh -huh. probably, and so I can win it out. Right. Even if I have less like worse cards, and at the same time I feel like against Burning Abyss, uh, the main weakness I was I was explaining is the build that people are actually playing now. Okay. Because I don't believe Burning Abyss to be the best deck because of particular combos or something, but just mainly because of consistency. Okay. That's it. So if you actually are able to change the shuttle deck into a consistent deck, 
I think you are having great success this weekend. All right. So that's my. And you, you got a build that is and very consistent. And I got a build that is extremely consistent. Oh, okay. I what? actually use a program which I suggest, which is called Hypergeometric Calculator. Okay. Which is just a mathem mathematic problem. Okay. Which helps you out uh, actually calculating the percentages of drawing bad ends or good. It's not to for Yu-Gi-Oh like is. Yeah, I know. I use that for building. Like a statistics yeah, exactly. software. Yeah, it's a statistic program. Yeah, and I use that for building my ends, and now I have like. Uh, more than 98% of drawing a playable and good end. Okay. So that's quite consistent. Very I guess. interesting yeah. approach you have. Yeah, there. it's a really interesting approach. Yeah. All right. Let me finish with one last question. Yeah. Because you say I'm one of the better players, so when I'm playing Shadol and mm -hmm. I have to play a mirror match, I'm mostly I'm going to come out on top. Yes. If I'm a new player, it's my first event this weekend, what deck should I be playing? Probably Burning Abyss. That's my. <laughs> 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 I mean, it, it, I don't think it's a matter of um, being new to the game, mm -hmm. but I feel like Shadows really require a lot of playtests. Okay. So that's why. Burning like, Abyss might Burning be Abyss a little bit more autopilot. I mean, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Burning Abyss and both Clyber, but as I said, I believe Clyber to be a little less better than the other ones. So I really suggest people who are new to the game or even. I mean, I also had events in the past where I couldn't test so much because yeah. of university or other issues. I suggest those people to play Burning Abyss. Okay. So, like, your, your uh, guess is it's going to be, like, 30% Burning Abyss, 20% Shadol, 10% mm. Clifford, and then 50% of the field random decks. Yeah, I guess the random decks are always a good part of it, but uh, I'm not sure about the... I mean, from what I heard, like, Burning Abyss is way more played than the rest. Okay. So I expect that to be a little, maybe 35% or mm. something, but, yeah. I mean, I don't know, because I got to say that for example, my team is uh, an example. We were around 10 people we yeah. are. And almost eight, apart from me and Joshua, were playing Burning Abyss. Burning Abyss, OK. And after, no, after we talked to each other about our shadows, oh. now it's like five and five. Okay. So already, a lot of people may have changed the idea, actually. Yeah. So it's going to be vulnerable. It's going to be a really interesting tournament. Exactly, yeah, I'm, yeah. Because if if somebody just says, oh, I just close my eyes and I'm still going to play Clifford, <laughs> and he, yeah, gets, exactly. he gets the good matchups all weekend, he, it, he yeah. might be That's why at I, the very I top of I feel like London settings. was interesting, but uh, Shadows was definitely the best deck. Now, I think it's a really interesting term. I'm excited to play in, in this, because I don't know what to expect neither. Like, anything could win, so... All we'll right, see. so you heard it from the champion himself. <laughs> a a anything could happen this weekend. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marcello, That's for okay. the short it interview. It was a pleasure for Best me. of luck this weekend. Thank you very much. We're sitting down with Joshua Schmidt, winner of YCS Madrid and one of the most successful Yu-Gi-Oh! players in Europe. Joshua, welcome to the table here um, in the feature match area. Usually, you're sitting over there behind, uh, behind the camera. Yep, that's right. Um, how does it feel for you um, to, to come to London and you're the winner of the latest event? Is it like extra pressure for you? Um, not really. It's, it's, it's kind of nice, actually, because I've... I've come, come to these events always uh, with the feeling of not having won one yet. And so it's kind of actually taking pressure away from me this time. Right. Because like, I've been trying to win one so long and uh, worked and so yeah. I know for a fact that in the German community they even had a joke which uh, was playing with the fact that you haven't won one yeah. yet. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's kind of a running gag and, yeah. and now you've crushed it. It was a running gag. It was a running gag. <laughs> Who do they put in the joke now? I don't know. They have we'll to come see. up with yeah, someone. Yeah, they have to find someone. All right. We're, we're going to tell, tell that joke at some point, but uh, not now. <laughs> okay, so um, let's get back to Madrid. Okay. You, um, you're going to the tournament, as always. It's, it was a slightly slower, uh, a smaller turnout compa compared to the events yeah. before. Um, is that something that you consider when you sign up for the event? You're like, my chances are better, or are they worse? Um, it's obviously, it was a little bit easier be to top the event because it was only nine rounds mm -hmm. but I feel like in all these European big events we always have the the great names are always there so exactly it's not really that the quality of the field is any lower all right it's just we have uh, nine rounds instead of ten or eleven mm -hmm. so and so actually the chance of meeting a, a better player in Swiss rounds might be higher mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's, it's, it balances yeah, out? it balances yeah okay um, so, how, how did the tournament start for you? Like, did you have some, some early victories and feel like, okay, I can do this? Uh, day one was pretty swift, actually. Like, I started out, we, we had seven rounds, I think, mm -hmm. and I started out 6-0. 
And then the last round of day one, I lost to uh, Zotella Night deck, which was kind of unfortunate. Like, I won game one, game two, he beat me in game three. I had a really unfortunate hand, so nothing I could do there. So I didn't feel too bad about that loss. Okay. And so, yeah, I went X1. Pretty good uh, day one result. Right. So you're, you're always traveling to the events with a lot of your friends. Yeah. And you're testing together and preparing together. So um, what happens in, in the evenings? Are you comparing scores? Everybody's like, hey, I went 6-1, I went 7-0. Yeah, obviously. Like, uh, that's one of the things about the game that makes it worth playing so much because traveling alone wouldn't be as fun. Mm -hmm. So after events, we always we all go out, we eat, we, we drink, we, we do stuff like that. And um, that's part of it. All yeah. right. Yeah. Cool. So uh, the next day, you're sitting in a pretty good position yeah. with a 6-1 with a record. And you said earlier, you just have to win one more. That's yeah, one like more. what you think in your head at that yeah, point, right? Like X2 is guaranteed to make top cut. So uh, winning one out of two rounds should not be should too be hard done. usually. Yeah. So yeah, I go into day two pretty con uh, confident that mm -hmm. I can do it. And I win the first round, f uh, feature match as well. Right. So yeah, a pretty good it. feature match, by the way. Nice yeah. yeah, thank you. OK, so, so now you made the top cut. Um, yeah. Again, <laughs> 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 happened a few times before. Uh, is that? Is that the point in time where you're like, okay, that's whatever happens, I've made the tops, so I'm, so I'm good? Or do you, do you always feel like, now I want to go all the way? Or I want to make it to the top eight, so I'm in the top eight profiles on the written coverage? Um, it's kind of like both. Like you, I, I've been there, so I'm not as excited as I was at the first, first time. time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I still ha hadn't won one yet, okay. so uh, I, I want to go the whole way. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I went there um, with the... Obviously, I'm always excited if I'm, when I make top cut. Like it was the 14th time, but it was still very exciting. 14 times. 14th time, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. All right. So um, looking at the top 32 deck list that we had, there was a, a lot of Shadol in that tournament. Did you feel that you had the the best version of Shadol? Yes. 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 <laughs> right away. Yes. Because we had a lot of discussions at that event. We're talking about um, should you run one copy of super polymerization or three copies even? And you, I think, if I remember correctly, you didn't run a single one. Not in the main deck. No. Not in the um, main. But th the thing is, with uh, with the list that I or me and my friends played, we were five people playing the deck, mm -hmm. and we ended up like only having one or two cards difference at max, and we ended up making a uh, uh, 36th and 38th place. That was our lowest results. Okay. We had uh, Eugen. Uh -huh. making third, and we had Robin making top 16, losing to Eugen, and then we had me making first place, so that was a pretty good result okay. for our decklist, and um, yeah, I was very con uh, confident w with right. this deck. Interesting, yeah. interesting. How did you uh, end up with the choice? Did you say super polymerization can be a dead card in certain scenarios? It's not only that, it was also that in the Shadow Mirror match, yeah. it, it is a very good card, a very game-breaking card, but um, it, it can be not what you want to have because it actually costs you a lot of resources to play the card. Yep. And it also, like, Shadows obviously have graveyard effects. So if you take away two opponents' Shadows, uh, they get their graveyard effects usually. They get back their own fusion with if you fuse a fusion monster from them yes. and so on. And it also sometimes ends up being, if you draw a super polymerization before you draw a Shadow fusion, mm -hmm. uh, you might not actually have a fusion in your graveyard oh. that you can take back when your uh, fusion monster dies. Okay. So it might actually not be that great of an advantage. It is a very good late game card, which is why I cited two copies for all the mirror matches. Yeah. And yeah that was Interesting. Okay. Well, it, it certainly seems like you were prepared. Yeah. But uh, I want to ask about that in just a second. How did it feel for you to finally have that win? I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was, amazing. It was like a, um, a huge uh, weight relief. Yeah, it was relief. a huge relief. OK. So well, I'm, I'm very glad that you finally won one. Thank you. Um, you said you, you prepared together. So walk us through the process, if I want to win a YCS. OK, so um, first of all, we were obviously looking at all the different decks. We mm -hmm. had like Burning Abyss, Teller Knights, Shadows. And Shadows seemed to be the best engine Right. Overall, so we decided, okay, we want to play Shadows, and Shadows need a light engine to work with. Mm -hmm. And so we looked at the different light engines. What is there? There's Light Swarms, there is uh, Artifacts, mm -hmm. there is, uh, like, you can just play uh, the, the, the Dragons, the Cola Serpent, and the Wyvern Buster. Right. And um, I felt like since Shadow, in my eyes, is a very good control deck with mm -hmm. all the flip effects, like, my version definitely was the slowest version of Shadows in, yeah. in Top Cut, I think. 
um, even though in the finals I had a pretty strong hand game <laughs> one, but usually it was a very, very slow you version of Shadows. You won in uh, turn S two. Second turn, yeah. Second I had the best hand possible pretty yeah. much, but <laughs> in general, you want to play a game where you set your monsters a lot to get your flip effects off yes. for the maximum advantage in the long run. Mm -hmm. You get uh, the more flip effects you get off, the yep. better you are. All right. Uh, in the mirror match especially. And we, uh, it seemed like uh, Artifacts was definitely the best version for it because it stopped the opponent from going too fast for you. As right. soon as he puts something on the board, you just flip you the Sanctum, you summon a Moral Tuck. And also what made me benefit from having the Moral Tucks in my deck is usually when you play Artifacts, you have a risk of drawing the Moral Tucks. Yes. But in Shadows, you just fuse them. Ah, okay. Well, like, like you said, there was a lot of thought going into yeah. this. All right, so we can of course expect you to be prepared this weekend once again. I hope so. Uh, <laughs> what deck are you playing this weekend, if I Shadol may ask? Shadol. I, I tweaked it a little bit toward the, the new Bandit list, two yeah. meta, new tech cards, but Shadol Artifacts. So, so what does the new list change? Is, there, is it tougher for you to win against some of the other decks, like Satella Knights mm. or Burning Abyss? It, it changed a little bit. Uh, the, the main decks didn't really change with the list, mm -hmm. but they changed throughout time, because yeah. the format changes a little bit when new decks come up. Sure. Um, and so I think the new Burning Abyss deck, how they play it now with Vanity's Fiend and stuff, uh, is a little bit tougher to deal with, okay. for Shadows especially, which is why they play it that way now. Yeah. But I hope to be prepared for that as well. All right. Uh -huh. Well, we, we're going to see tomorrow, I'm, I'm certain of that. Um, so what else? Uh, how do you like... You said that you're going out in the evenings together as a group and you're enjoying the, the place that you're going to. Is it one of the things about London where you're like really excited to, to visit the British capital? Uh, well, I have been here last year as well, but okay. it, it was it was pretty nice. We have visited uh, quite a few places like uh, Big Ben, Piccadilly Circus, stuff like that. It was it was quite nice, right? And maybe this time we'll catch some places we haven't seen last time. I I think there are lots of sites yeah. in London, so you can. I don't can think we have seen. I else. don't think we've seen enough last time. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, I think that's all we got for the time being. Thank okay. you very much for being here. No problem. Thanks for having me. Congratulations again for your win in Madrid. Yes. And we're um, looking forward to seeing you in action tomorrow. Thanks. Welcome back to the live coverage of YCS Milan. Last round was taking a little bit longer than expected. Yes, it did go uh, 105 minutes over time. Yeah, with um, one player. Um, that, that was a deck check and everything that yeah. took some time and then they went to the uh, end of match procedure which is something that can happen when you have 1461 players coming to one uh, place uh, however we only got 160 remaining in competition and we are in round 11 now so this is the very last round where everyone was allowed to participate no matter what their record was so even yes. if you lost the first 10 rounds you could have uh, continued playing for the very last round which is not what most people are doing. Instead, they are signing up for the public events. Yesterday, of course, public events weren't that... The re registration wasn't quite running wild, which is understandable. Because yeah, a lot of players were sticking into it just because they were thinking, if I'm not getting my ordeal of the traveler mat today, or something to do with that, yeah. maybe, maybe my key ring, because a lot of people are enjoying the key ring. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not getting that today, do I have to stay until tomorrow? And I don't think they had really just clarified yeah. that. Half of them simp simply continued to play until the very last round. And uh, yesterday we had one regionals. Today we already had six regionals. So you can tell that players today are looking for something else to do um, and playing in these other events. We got some other side events. Uh, yes, we also have the uh, giant card. We had one giant card yesterday, again, because everybody was still playing the YCS. We've actually had five giant card events today. I don't... Uh, that's actually all of the giant card that events. That is all the giant cards. They yeah. are all gone, yes. Uh, that includes the... Um, the Merlin? The Merlin. The Merlin that was printed in Platinum Rare um, because nobody, uh, nobody ever thought to say, don't print it in Platinum Rare. Yeah. So, so they just went ahead and printed it in Platinum Rare. Th this card was actually a trap. Which is quite confusing because you're like, what? That's a monster card. But uh, I went there and uh, PJ was like, it's a Platinum Rare. And I'm like, looking at the card, don't really see any shiny effects. And until you and move then, it. Until you until move you it. it and if it, it hit the right angle and I was blind. Yes. I was <laughs> the next 30 minutes I was just lying around like... Uh. Also, what's funny about that card is it says, uh, still says limited edition at the bottom. It doesn't say this card cannot be used in a duel like all of the others. Uh, so you can play that in your deck. <laughs> if you can find a sleeve big enough that it wouldn't be marked in your deck, if you can find an entire deck of cards that size that are tournament legal, then you can play that Merlin in your deck. Yeah, that's excellent strategy. Yes, there is also a Herald 
of ultimateness as well over there, which I saw. <laughs> which we saw yep. yesterday on the feature match. Um, there are also 12 winner mats yesterday and 13 today. And of course, our second main event this weekend is the Dragon Duel Championship. It is, it is. There's, um, it's for under 14s, I believe. Uh, 13, 13 and younger, 13 exactly. And younger, yeah. yep, so so um, these guys are the up and coming dual is superstars like uh, two of these guys that we have at the feature match table before you take you before we take you there one more thing um, a new thing that I wanted to show off here we got beepers this weekend so when you're signing up for one of these public events you're getting handed one of these then you can go for well a stroll have a coffee or uh, espresso of course in Italy and then at some point it starts beeping and tells you hey you're in tournament number 20 and you go back to the public event stage and you can start playing with your friends. And it's a coaster, so you could put your coffee on top of it as well. <laughs> now, All right. looking at it as well, just in case you are, you are actually in the venue and you're watching this and you're thinking, do I really want to play in a winner mat event? This is the uh, winner map. Yes. That um, is a Rio and Ragnafinity map, which is gorgeous, and you should definitely go and get one of these. Absolutely. All right. With that out of the way, back to the main event. Round 11, crunch time for Luigi Alici on the, I think, left-hand side of the screen. Yes, and uh, on the right-hand side, it's Omar Sabedin, who uh, we know because he's a judge as well. Uh, you <laughs> oh, I know that he's a judge <laughs> as well. Um, so let's take you to the table over there, where these guys have already sit, uh, decided to sit down. And um, as always, we will have all the information for you. Um, we have, of course, perfect information with uh, both of the deck lists. Uh, you can tell by looking at the screen here that Luigi is running Burning Abyss and Omar is running a very unique take on the Shadow archetype. Yes, he's actually running both Artifact and Chaos in the same deck. Uh, there's three Morale Tech, one Chaos Sorcerer and one Blackluster Soldier. Uh, there isn't any sort of um, Wyver Buster or... Collab Serpent. Yes. And so, and, and we, have, we have seen this before. Omar, uh, on the right, has a, a very good understanding of the game and he always has a, a slightly different take than most of the other players. And this is why he goes with this. So, here we have got the, the opening five for Luigi Alici on the left hand side. He's also wearing a um, very fashionable t shirt there. Um, he's got a mystical space typhoon, Raigeki, and two copies of Seer together with a Rubik. And uh, let's take a look at Omar's opening hand. That is also looking rather promising with two mathematicians. Yeah, currently he's got the ability to make a uh, Dante from that. Yes, that is uh, Luigi, of course. Uh, special summoning two Burning Abyss monsters to the field. And he's dropped Rubik into his graveyard there so that he's able to get it out with that seer later on. Uh, did we see what he sent to the graveyard um, from the deck? Yes, um, the only thing really in there that was a Burning Best monster was the Alec. All right. So um, Omar drew a card for his turn. That's the Sinister Shadow Games. Um, good card to enable all your combos. Interestingly enough, we had these conversations when we talked to players after their respective matches that often you need this one turn to set up everything in the Shadow deck. And they said that it's no longer as good as it used to be because you simply don't have the time. There is also a very, very interesting thing that might happen at the end of this turn. In the end phase, uh, I can see that mystical space stuff him possibly trying to attempt to get rid of something. And if it hits that artifact Sanctum, then Dante is going down. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It means that he's going to be able to get something back to hand from the graveyard, which would be that Alec, and the Seal would then be able to special summon the Rubik for setting up a Virgil play. So there's a <coughs> Falco being sent to the graveyard. Yep, a Squamata send, Squat being sent to the graveyard, Squamata sending Falco. Falco then allows to set itself on the field. Very powerful combo. Especially when that Falco is flipped, if it, uh, I believe it's, um, special summon something else from the graveyard as well yes. as it can do itself. It's just a, it's just a free summon. Yes, but it also that Squamata uh, destroys a monster when it's flipped face up. Oh, and there's the MST. Space Typhoon, and it has hit the Sinister Shadow Games and not the Artifact Sanctum. Yeah, that is unfortunate for, for Omar. And uh, good news for Luigi, of course. He's, got, he's playing main decking Raigeki. Yeah. We, we haven't seen that too often this weekend. 
And to be honest with you, there's been a lot of situations where you think, you know what, a Raigeki would really come in handy right now. Yep. And uh, that is one of the, the big stories uh, going into this format, actually, with, with play saying, Raigeki comes back, that's just, that's sick. This card has been on a, sitting on the bench for so very long, but um, even Dark Hole hasn't been seeing a lot of play last, last format. It's simply because when it doesn't matter if the cards are going to the graveyard anymore. They're all going to do effects, and you don't want your opponent to get them off. Okay, so the Seer went, and that's going to get the Rubik out. And he's going to be able to do a special summon here as well. All right, so Uma is still holding on to Shadow Dragon, Shadow Falco, and the Mathematician. Now, I believe a Graph went to the graveyard there, which is why he's a special summon Skarm from the deck. Now, this is going to be painful, uh, because he can now Synchro Summon into Rubik. Uh, allowing him to have that Skarm effect at the end of the turn as well. But that depends whether he's just going to wall up or whether he's going to go for it. Yeah, very rarely you, you see players walling up, do you? It, not it seems not like anymore. It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot more. Well, unless you're in overtime and you want to... I mean, Burning Abyss walls up very, very well because he kind of just sits there behind all of these massive Dantes. Now, in response to Virgil being summoned there, he's playing Artifact Sanctum. Artifact Sanctum... Its only target is going to be Moral Moral Tuff. Tuff. Yep. And uh, that's going to take out that Synchro Summon. Yeah, it's more than likely going to take out the Virgil in this situation. Yeah, and as you can see in our little ticker on the lower half of the screen, this is the final round of regular play. And after that, we're going to proceed with the top 32 playoff. So that means five more rounds to victory. And uh, one of these two guys is uh, going to have a shot at winning the title. And he's just drawn into Black Luster Soldier. <sighs> that is um, he has the ability to now play it, I believe, as well. Uh, Virgil is a light monster, is it not? Yeah, I was about to bring it up on the right-hand side. But unfortunately, we don't have access to the cards in the graveyard because that would be a little bit too much. But yes, it is a light monster. And there's the Raigeki. It's actually quite useful in that situation. I mean, the Falco gets sent to the graveyard and simply returns, and um, then it gets destroyed by battle. Which is interesting that he chose to uh, put the Falco there and not the Squamata. If he would have put the Squamata, he would have forgot his flip effect, meaning it did st would destroy the Dante. Um, no, no, it's the effect it of it's the effect of Falco because it was sent to the graveyard by a card effect. It was destroyed by Raigeki, and then it can only special summon itself. Oh yes, of course, of course. Sorry, I thought it's, it's not the for some reason effect. I thought he was getting flip face up. Nope, that was uh, Swords of Revealing Light. But <laughs> well, we haven't seen that card in a while. So there's a Downerd Magician in main phase two, replacing Dante, and uh, this way you can absolutely ensure that Dante is going to go to the graveyard no matter what. Yes. Uh, which is why this card is so, or one of the reasons why this card is so popular. Um, which means that you will definitely get the trigger when he is sent to the graveyard and uh, return a Burning Abyss card to your hand. Uh, Macrocosmos and Dimensional Fissure is basically the only way to ensure that that's not going to yeah. happen. And these cards are... Uh, dimensional Fissure isn't, because uh, when it's an Exceed material, it doesn't count as a monster. Oh. So only Macrocosmos, I think. All right, so um, it's Oma's turn, and that looks like a hedgehog that he's uh, searching for here. So he summoned another mathematician. That we can bring this guy up for you again, the bearded man. He's uh, pulling monsters out of his beard, or, well, in this case, your deck, and then sending them to the graveyard. A little bit like Inspector Gadget, but... With beards. <laughs> All right. Go, go, Gadget Beard. So, <laughs> Skormata being sent to the graveyard. Falco following suit. Is that what's happening? Uh, yes. Oh, actually, is that a dragon? I, I can never tell, just because, because okay, he's going, he's going Skormata and then Beast. All right. Beast to just draw another card and see where it gets him. And um, Remembering that he is running the Chaos section as well. But it's possible he'll get what he needs here. And he got an El Shadol Fusion. Uh, he can bring out a Winder at this point. And uh, how big is the Downward Magician, actually? Uh, it should be 2,100 if it's not used any effects. It's 2-1, yep. And um, 
You can also detach a material. Uh, it, it gains 200 ah, shots right, so for yeah, each material, so it's 2-3 at the moment. Okay, so he's used the Elshadol Fusion to bring out the Winder. It's pretty straightforward, and he gets rid of the Dragon and the Falco, and uh, we've seen... And Phoenix Wind Wind Blast to get rid of that. And yeah. He's discarding a Seer. Seer's effect will activate also. And that is all of this is, is looking really, really good for um, Luigi, in my opinion. So he's, he's getting rid of the window. He still has the largest monster on the field. And I believe he just set a hedgehog from the graveyard. Um, according to our app, there's a mathematician and a shadow of Falco on ah, the field. Falco. And um, in case you're wondering, Luigi is still holding on to the Black Luster Soldier and the tour guide from the Underworld. So some big plays incoming there. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. And uh, with uh, Omar's problem here is he doesn't have any sort of protection in his back row. He's only got a Mathematician in hand, which he cannot summon because he's given up his normal summon for the turn. And his field is, of course, uh, the Falco that Luigi is aware of. And um, that Mathematician and also Downward Magician deals, it, it tramples. Yes, it does. Now, looking at it, he's going to probably I think go for the second. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough, but he's going to have the Downward Magician over the Falco. Um, then he can bring out Black Luster Soldier, attack twice with that. He's also going to have a Dante by the look of it. It depends, really. It, although, interesting enough, Luigi is not just playing Raigeki in this main deck. He's also playing Dark Hole. Uh, hmm. uh, a lure of darkness. Oh, okay. That was a mistake on uh, the app. So uh, it's a lure of darkness. That's that makes more sense. Yeah. Um, draw two cards, banish a dark monster from your hand, and if you don't, you're gonna lose your hand. So uh, it's it's not really a gamble with so many dark monsters in this deck. Yeah. Even when it's the only card that you're drawing into and you've got nothing on your hand, sometimes you, you have to activate it and you're simply going to draw into a dark monster and then you found another card that can hopefully be some some sort of use. And he's looking at... Uh, he's got quite a few options here. Yeah, but is it going to be Dante? Pretty yep. Yeah, there we go. So Dante is uh, traveling some more. And again, Luigi immediately triggering uh, the effect of Dante. And he's going to send most likely three cards to his graveyard. There we go. One, two, three. There's a Vanity's Emptiness, an Upstart Goblin, and one of the Malabranch. And um, so he, g he gets to special summon Virgil back to the field with uh, the effect of uh, Malabranch that he just sent to the graveyard. That is pretty big for him. Yeah. And um, now, with his hand, with the Black Luster Soldier, a card that decided quite a few games this weekend, and it's, it's not going to stop with that, um, he also gets to... So he's returning the Falco back to the deck. Doesn't yeah, have so to worry about it. So Omar does have a, a dead draw the next turn. Oh, no, uh, he doesn't draw into it. It's, it gets shuffled away. But uh, still, I'm not even sure if Omar is going to see another turn. Because that Dante is 2,500. That Downward Magician is a uh, 2-1 because it detaches when it attacks. So that's already 4,600. Then we got Virgil with another 2-5. And then we got a Black Luster Soldier in way of the beginning coming. Which he hasn't Oh, uh, because Virgil attacked. came back. He doesn't have a Light Monster in the graveyard anymore. No, that is correct. Although, wasn't there also a Dante that was sent there? Yeah, there's a chance this happened. So... I'm somewhat confused. No, the Dante is still under the Downward Magician. Now oh, it's, now now it's, it's in, in the graveyard. graveyard. Yeah, okay. there we go. So he, he was missing the Light Monster. Otherwise, that would have been the victory for Luigi Alici. But even though you, you have to ask and, and wonder what is Omar going to do here with just a Mathematician in hand. I mean, he, he can probably handle one monster, but can he handle three big threats? It depends what he draws now. I mean, he has... I believe a light monster in the well, he has a morale tag in the graveyard, so he may be able to bring out his own black cluster soldier, or he may even be able to bring out a chaos sorcerer just to deal with one of the cards. Yeah, so Luigi is, is well prepared and sitting in a very comfortable position, big life point lead, and um, his advantage is only going to be even 
he's going to gain even more of an advantage now, drawing two cards of a Lure of Darkness. Moving Kalkap. And uh, he's got a Mystical Space Typhoon now as well. He drew into that. So he's going to set that, probably. And now he's he can deal with back row cards. He can deal with monsters with his Black Luster Soul, just sitting, waiting in his hand, and Virgil, of course. And uh, this is looking really, really bad for Omar. What's that other spell card he's got in his hand there? Uh, it's an it. artifact ignition, and that is not helping. Yeah, he, he can set the artifact ignition and, and hope that Luigi is going to pop it. Let's see what he just drew into there. Why did he draw another card? Um, am I missing something? Um, uh, the mathematician got destroyed by Ah, okay, okay, I see. All right, but even even with three cards in hand, it was a shit old beast there. Um, even with three cards, there was nothing that Omar could do against that gigantic field. No, it was absolutely huge. I mean, Virgil, Dante, possibility of a... He didn't know that the Black Star Soldier there, but as yeah, soon yeah. as he dropped down, it was going to be a heavy, heavy game that he was just going to lose. Now, he, now both guys are going to go for their respective side decks. And um, interestingly enough... Um, we we uh, almost have the same thing that we've seen at uh, Kevin Kammermann last round with uh, only five cards in the side deck played in threes. Rather than that, they both got... It's interesting, four cards in threes and then two copies of one card and one copy of another card. Yeah, now they're both... Well, Luigi is running a three enemy controller, uh, which would be a nice thing against it. Well, against his opponent just to basically go, yeah, you're not keeping this card at all and I'm going to activate my effects, by the way. Um, he's also got <laughs> Majestic's Fiend, yeah. a card that we have seen yesterday in the very last round. You can actually revisit all of those matches that we've recorded yesterday if you click on the past broadcast section on the Twitch channel. So you can watch all these feature matches again, uh, maybe in between rounds, for example. Now, yes, and Majestic's Fiend just says no better than any other card can say no. Yes, uh, uh, it comes out so early as well. Both uh, game two and game three in that round eight feature match, it was uh, hitting play on Sona Gunga's very first turn. Yes. Now, also, Omar has a Denko Seka. Uh, he oh has to yeah, play that in threes as well. But that's is, uh, well, Denko Seka is actually quite good against Burning Abyss with, yes. with all those back row cards. You're not going to be able to get off the Phoenix Moon Windblast, Karma Cuts, or Fire Lakes, or even your Vanities, or Solemn Warning. You can't basically, all of those cards that he is currently playing will help Luigi win. And with Denko Seker out, completely and totally useless for him. Yep. Now, that is to say as well, because I believe well, Denko Seker, you, not, you can't play your own spell and trap cards? Yes, oh. yeah, yeah. Uh, you can activate the spell cards, but you cannot set cards, and you cannot activate any cards that have previously been set, which is something we have seen uh, earlier today in a Greek mirror match with uh, Ioannis Morelatos going up against the other Ioannis. And um, Morelatos had five face down cards in his back row and then a Denko Seka drops and suddenly all five of those cards are dead. Cannot activate them anymore. It's completely filled. Cold Every zone. wave coming back as a monster. So um, these guys are of course familiar with each other, both being from Italy and um, since the Italian community is known for traveling to, to other places whenever there's a regional being held or something like that, and Omar also being a judge and traveling for that quite a bit, um, th they, they will know each other quite well. Now, it's interesting that uh, Shadow is one of, meant to be one of the counters to Burning Abyss, and Burning Abyss just completely beat out there. Yeah, and that first game Burning Abyss had, from the very first turn on, they had a very good control of the matchup, in my opinion. Um, with, with Luigi pulling ahead and Omar never coming back. But then again, we didn't see a Shadow Fusion. No, we... Well, yes, we saw an El Shadow Fusion, which brought our window. The window was immediately just returned to hand with a Phoenix... Well, to a deck with Phoenix Bloom Windblast. The uh, interesting thing that we've got, though, is um, the fact that Omar is running Artifact Ignition as well as Artifact Sanctum. Now, that was fine in a hat deck, but it's kind of a dead draw. Uh, which we saw happen in that last game there. He was sat with an artifact ignition, thinking, it doesn't matter if I'm setting an artifact right now, because I'm going to lose. And if it was an artifact, artifact sanctum, for example, he would have got a lot more out of it. Yeah. So he has five ways to special summon an artifact monster from his deck, and he's only running three copies of Moraltach. So he is betting on the fact that he's going to wrap up 
games before he's going to draw into those dead cards, I think. Now, let's just have a look and see what's in Omar's hand. I believe Omar's going first. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. You don't want to give the Burning Abyss monster this, this great opening with double Dante that we've often seen this weekend and in previous tournaments. There's a, there are the hands. So Omar's got a Mathematician and he's going to go live right away. And you also got a Shadow of Falco, Shadow of Beast, Shadow of Core, and the Black Luster Soldier. And a Mathematician being uh, allowing him to send something to the graveyard. That is Squamata. And the Beast. Is that correct? Yes. So he's just drawing a card he's there. He's just drawing another card. Um, but he doesn't really have any sort of prevention. Yeah, that's the Beast again. Just to bring that up for you guys on the right-hand side. So, he's now setting the Shadow Core, and he drew into a second copy of Mathematician. So let's bring up Shadow Core, because this is one of the cards that has been... Some people have been debating about that card. Sometimes they are... Most people only run one copy of that. Yeah, they'll only run one copy because they, they don't believe that it's, it's going to... There are better cards that you could be using that slot for, is... Uh, the general consensus now immediately comes down Majesty's Fiend yep no surprise there um, introduced from the side deck and um, y since you always have tribute material because you can special summon all of those Malabranch of the Burning Abyss this is really really big for Luigi and he's got a defusion set so he's got a way to work around um, if, if Omar would attempt to go for a shadow fusion he doesn't have a way to uh, perform that particular move. Um, but if he would, then um, Defusion could answer that immediately. Yep. At instant speed. Now, what we're. Well, I think what he needs to hope for now is a light monster that he can get into the graveyard. That is the only way that he's currently getting over. Uh, getting over the Majesties. Fiend, yep. So, um. But with a mathematician, that shouldn't be too hard. No, nope, he should be able to. Should be able to. Do it. It's interesting that he didn't then play. Oh, because the effect can't activate. <laughs> it's saying no. It's saying no again. Yep. And uh, Majesty's Fiend doesn't have any sort of restriction when the effect has to kick in. It simply says all of monster effects. It doesn't matter if it's in the hand, in the graveyard, when it's banished or something. If you look at his face, you can see that he's saying no. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what he's doing. Just hands outstretched. No! So there's a Shadol Skomata being sent to the grave. And now Oma is just losing a, just losing a card. He's just losing cards every and single Oh, uh, yeah, I was about to say Mathematician could send some light monsters to the graveyard. Of course it Do can't. Anything. Yeah, because Majesty's Fiend. No! <laughs> so Oma is drawing dead at the moment. He's, he's got a mystical space typhoon. And, like... All he can do is continue to set monsters and... Um, Just watch them go straight to the graveyard. Yeah, and yep. they're, they're not going to do anything. There's an upstart goblin, so Luigi is not in a hurry to, to uh, reduce Omar's life points to zero. He's going to be happy with that. Uh, Majesty's Fiend gaining him more and more and more of an advantage. Now, Omar is running Ryan Geki in his side deck. It's possible that he put that straight in. Now, the issue that they've got... Um, that Luigi has got is that he can't play any of the other monsters in his deck currently. Yeah, uh, Lu Luigi also, this is his field after his turn, Ascarum set and uh, Phoenix Wing Windblast. I think, no, he, he still has four cards in his hand. So once uh, Omar can deal with that, Majesty's Fiend, then there's a Black Luster Soldier waiting. That's, all of that is pretty big news. And um, Omar now found a Shadow Fusion. That is possible out but it's a little too late because now Luigi does have the Phoenix Wing Wind Blast sitting in his back row. All the defusion. Oh, all the defusion of course. Yeah, yeah he's well prepared to be able to just get rid of any fusion monster that hits the field. That is true, yeah. Matches this fiend and, and any sort of back row really is it's like a locking down your opponent. Wow, that is that is just big. So here's the Shadow Core, and it's going to resolve first and uh, put a monster on the field that Omar can then use for the fusion summon. Because in case you weren't aware, you actually choose what's being 
fused together at resolution. So there we go. And yeah, the only question is how long is gonna is this monster gonna stay on the field? It's gonna be one or five seconds. We have so many answers from uh, Luigi waiting in his back row. So one second is the defusion, right? Uh, one second is the defusion. The five seconds is Phoenix is Wing. Because you us. have to discard a card, of course, sorry, yeah. Yeah, but he, he's not going to go for the Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, I think, because he couldn't get the, the, the effect of the, the card that he drew. Now, he's just played the, uh, the construct there. Yep. I he's just going to wait for an attack to happen to do it. So there we go. I mean, Defusion may be the optimum play at the moment, so you've got your Phoenix Wing Wind Blast for anything else, but there nope. we go. He's, he's going for the Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, which is interesting, in my opinion. But of, of course, Luigi's going to have a plan here. We can, we can ask him about that after the match. If he wins, of course. If he wins, yeah. But with this position that he's sitting in, and that matches this fiend that's totally dominating, it, it looks a little bit like it. It's possible that Omar at the moment, he's just kind of waiting to possibly run into a super polymerization. Yeah. Is he running that? He is. He is. I'd, I'd be surprised if a shadow deck wasn't running super polymerization. It's well, we have seen quite a few shadow decks without super polymerization because L shadow fusion is often replacing it. Even though the cards are not exactly doing the same. So there is a, finally, there's an out for Omar, a compulsory evacuation device. It's only going to solve that problem f for a short while. Maybe a turn. Yeah, maybe a turn. Next turn, it's just, Magic's Fiend's just going to pop back out. So, but then again, if he returns it, he, maybe he will take the damage, and then during the end phase, he will return it. So he will then have a turn where he can finally u make use of all those monster effects that he's having. This is his hand for you guys again. He does have the Black Luster Soldier, but no Light Monster in the graveyard. And another Shadow Fusion, in fact. And so, here's kind of his choice. Well, he just... Does he go for another Construct, or... No, he's just going to no, wait it out. No, it's just going to be like, okay, I finally got a window of opportunity to get rid of that Venice Magistus Fiend, even though it's just for a short while. And he's gonna happily take the damage here. Well, not too happy, I guess, but it's, it could be worse. And I think Luigi did draw into a tour guide of from the underworld. And so he's up on four cards in hand. The fourth card will be uh, popping up shortly. And um, Let's see what Omar is drawn into. There is the compulsory at the end of turn. And this is, uh, this is when it counts the most for Omar. This is when he, he has to make it count now. Because it, it, it might as well be his, his very last chance to make it count. Unfortunately, it isn't going to work like that. So he has to discard his... Blackluster Soldier for the Shadow Fusion. Yeah, he's bringing out the Construct there. Um, let's just bring up Defusion there. Yeah, so Luigi saw the writing on the wall that there's going to be another Fusion Monster eventually that's going to hit play. And um, he still has an answer with that Defusion in his back row. And the other big threat that Omar was holding onto the Black Luster Soldier is now gone. So Omar is really running out of gas here. And of course, as it says on there on Black Luster Soldier, if Defusion was used, this must be first special summoned from your hand, so it wouldn't be able to be special summoned via Defusion. It's just whether Luigi does realize that. Yeah, like like many of the older monsters, um, you need to properly special summon it first before you can bring it back any other way. Yeah. So Luigi is and he's chaining the defusion. 
Yeah, he, he was about to lose the defusion, but he simply chains it, which is, of course, excellent for him. And um, let's bring that card up again. I think that card is from Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Yes. If not that, then something very, very close to it. Yeah, it's, it's also very, very old. Again, it's nice to see all of these old card types, all of the old cards coming back. And uh, yeah, Omar is now left with a mystical space typhoon, the construct. The construct is gonna bite the dust in just a second. There we go. And a uh, set Falco. And he did draw into the Chaos Sorcerer, which he can now special summon. But it's yeah, he has to go for it. I, yeah, I think there, there's, there's no nothing else that he can really do. The, the problem there is that Chaos Sorcerer of course has a two thousand three hundred attack. It's the uh, smaller brother of Black Luster Soldier. And the Magistis Fiend could simply attack over it if uh, Luigi were to have uh, some tribute material, which wouldn't be all that surprising. Now he's attacking the uh, base down there. Unfortunately, that's a defusion because it has no targets. It's going to kind of just stay on the field. Um, but that's not to worry because with Skarm, that should be a tour guide straight to hand. Yeah, uh, I was wrong earlier. He didn't draw into a tour guide. He uh, during Takayas. Yep. And there's the tour guide straight into hand, which meaning that he's going to be able to get a Dante to be able to uh, get rid of that Chaos Sorcerer very quickly. Yeah. Now, is and that a the third, third defusion? defusion? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, most good things come in threes. The defusion is fine when you just hold on to two copies. And, um, yeah, now, now he doesn't want to go for the regular Burning Abyss plan of special summoning monsters to the field. Instead he goes with the normal summon, but a special summon is going to follow with a tour guide bringing out a graph. Yeah, he's Maybe not. Deciding. Just having, taking a look at what's in his hand and thinking, hmm. what can I do to win? So now the Mala Branch not getting destroyed because the effect is negated by Tour Guide. And um, no surprise there, we're going to see an Exceed Summon. What's he going to go for is the question. All right, and Dante. He's going to add insult to injury, really, for, for Omar here. I don't quite remember how, he, um, how things were going for him when we featured him in London. And uh, just like all of the matches that you have seen this weekend, you can watch all the other uh, broadcasts from the past events again both on youtube and on twitch i recommend youtube because it tends to load a little bit faster aha uh -huh. he has uh, just used calcav from the t that material and also sent a seer to the graveyard he's also s he's actually sending his own diffusion back to hand so that he can special summon which is essentially going to win this for him Special summoned Calcab with the effect of Seer. Or maybe he's just marking that that's the effect that's happening. Yeah. I remember now that uh, Omar, when he was on the stream, it was round 11 as well. So it was also crunch time, just like it is today. He was going up against Tom Payne from the UK. And um, one thing that caught our interest in that game was. Uh, Tom, w Omar was on 8,000 life points, uh, but Tom had so much advantage with uh, Burning Abyss, he amassed advantage over the course of the game, that Omar scooped with 8,000 life points. He was wow. like, there's no chance that I'm going to win this. You're like five cards ahead, something like that. And he, he just 
saw the writing on the wall. He's like, this, uh, let's not waste any time and let's just go straight to game two. Now, he's uh, doing what we kind of expected there. After returning everything with this cow cab, he is a uh, special summoned all of the monsters. And he's just going to make plays. Oh, is that three rank? Is that three level threes? Yep. Ooh. That's the first time we've seen that this weekend. And that card is incredibly shiny and hard to see on the camera there. Let's wait for that just to come through. Right, and um, it's, of course, try -age, try -age. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, now Luigi can get rid of, of Omar's remaining cards on the field. And Levia, of course, taking out the Falco for good. And you can also detach a material, target a phaser monster, and it loses 800 attack and the effects are negated. So, and this can be activated during the opponent's turn as well, so I think there's very, very little that Omar can do to come, to come back here, to be honest. I mean, we, we have seen some, some amazing comebacks this weekend, but let's look at the hand of uh, Luigi again. There's still the Majesty's Fiend that was dominating the first half of this game. There's still two uh, defusions there also. So, yeah, so to also deal with, with anything that Omar can muster up to put up some sort of offense. There they go back down. Now, down in position uh, has come out as well, and it's pretty big. There's, oh, and that is a Shadow Fusion that he's just drawn into. Well, fortunately, oh, well, there's things from the extra deck now, so he is going to be able to use it. Yeah, he's going to... At least that's something for, for Omar, really. But uh, what he doesn't know, what we know, and you guys know, is that there's still the defusion face down. So let's bring up Shadow Fusion, the signature card of the Shadow archetype. It's a little bit like advanced ritual art, just better. Basically, yeah. They uh, get if you got uh, a monster summoned from the X deck on your opponent's side of the field, you can send fusion materials from your deck to the graveyard. Yeah, and the only restriction really is that you can only activate one copy per turn. But with El Shadol Fusion, you can also get Fusion from your hand and field once per turn as well. And that one is a quick play, which is completely ridiculous because it means that you're getting two attacks <laughs> during your uh, battle phase. Yeah, and we have also seen that this weekend. I think it was Patrick Reader. Yes, Patrick Reader did that in all of his games, actually. And now he's activating the Mystical Space Typhoon, trying to hit a defusion. Uh, he's hit the defusion, so he must be feeling pretty safe right now. But he did just reveal the other one to his opponent. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's very, very bad news for Omar. Um, and let's not forget about that triage. I mean, it only has 1,800 attack, but it can reduce the attack of another monster by 800. So that's like it is a 2,600 beat stick. Basically, yes. It's y gonna be. You need to have something to attack over it. Plus, it negates effects. Yep. So even... Oh, well, uh, El Shadow Construct would be enough to attack over it. But it's not going to stay on the field because of the defusion. Yeah. Really thinking this through. Yeah, and Omar also uh, counting the cards in his deck that can still turn things around for him. And um, I don't think there's, there's a very high count here. So there's the morale attack and a hedgehog to the graveyard. And there goes the construct. And hedgehog allows him to search for another card there. Let's see whether he plays this. Okay, he's thinking about Falco. And then he's looking at the El Shadol fusion. The Oshido Fusion not helping much at the moment because he doesn't have any cards in hand. Yeah, is there like any line of plays that you can identify? Where okay, so El Shadol Fusion goes to the graveyard and Falco goes to hand? Is that how he's, uh, how he's doing that? Um, 
You can send oh, one Shadol uh, card from your deck to the graveyard. It doesn't need to be a monster. Yeah. So he can send the El Shadol Fusion to the graveyard because he doesn't want to draw it in. He doesn't want to draw into it. And uh, okay, so set. now he's got the, the Falco. There's Caius. <laughs> That's in this case even worse than the Majesty's Fiend. It's going to remove it's gonna from deal play. Deal 1,000 with the effect. Yes. And wow. um, there are still attacks incoming. And uh, well, it, the it's uh, the <laughs> he's not even got a hand. It's literally just waiting for him to attack. Oh, and he's just oh oh insult to injury. Ooh, <laughs> this can't be legal. Yeah, sometimes. By that, I mean it is legal, but you know this is torture. Why? Oh, oh. look what I've got, and look what you don't have, and you can't summon, and I win. <laughs> My name is Luigi, and yeah. I am the win. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just I don't care. Look at me. I can do more things to kill you, and I'm going to do them because I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not the nicest way to, <laughs> to tell your opponent to leave the table, please. Well, it was more the fact that he um, he knew that the construct he destroyed the defusion, didn't even wait for him to resolve yeah. the shadow fusion, and just went, "I have another one," <laughs> and then yeah. just went, "Whatever, I'll just put a construct in the graveyard then," <laughs> and it yeah. didn't help at all. <laughs> That's that's the unfortunate thing when you don't have um, you don't have a camera of the player's face in that situation. No, uh, or, and you don't have sound, of course. So it can make all the difference the way that you're telling this to your opponent. It's either like, uh, whatever, I got another card here, or you're going, it's pretty bad luck for you, bro, because I do have another copy here. Yeah. So so the one way is to do it in a friendly way, and the other way is to, well, be not so nice. Yeah. Let's just call it that. Um, so that was. That was a commanding victory, and uh, you, you can't help but feel sorry for Omar Sabedin. A little bit. 11th round in uh, YC's London, he's on the bubble. He is playing Burning Abyss, loses to Shadol. This weekend, way. he's oh, yes. playing Shadol and loses to Burning Abyss. Yes. So he's like, okay, I couldn't beat them last time, so I'm going to join them. And then his old deck is uh, messing with his plans of going and advancing to the top 32. This is... Nice. This is pretty rough. Turning around what, uh, basically what everybody's been saying to me, that there is a triangle. There is no triangle. Whoa, whoa, there is a pyramid. A pyramid. Yes. And uh, Burning Abyss is kind of sitting up here. Yep. Uh, Looking down. Yeah. As I said, it's some sort of four-dimensional object. So Burning yeah. Abyss just happens to be at the top of it currently, it, it, as we've seen in pretty much every game that Burning Abyss has been involved in. Then again, it's it's not like uh, YCS London, where um, at the start of day one, should almost um, sending... 30% of the field, 30% uh, of the players were playing with Shadol at the end of day one, or well, the start of day two, no matter how you look at it, it was roughly like 40 or, or 45%. And then at the start of the top 32, we were up to 60%. So Shadol simply kept on, it's like a, a living organism kicking everything else out. It's like, I'm gonna be the dick this weekend. Yeah. And whatever what you are, I'm just gonna uh, like uh, annihilate you. Well, after this round, we're going to find out exactly what the top 32 cut is. That is true, yeah. So, we will be able to see if it's completely switched round. Because, what do you expect to see? Because I expect to see... A lot of Burning Abyss. Yes. Um, right at the top. There is a... Well, what we've seen in the last few events, even when one deck was extremely dominating, there's always some room for somebody to sneak in with one of the rogue decks. Um, either because he had some good matchups, or, well he has found the perfect build to make it work. Like this, this one take on Noble Knights that can actually take the tournament by storm. Yes. And um, so, so um, well, we're going to see, I think we're going to see a lot of Burning Abyss. We're going to see a lot of Shadol because simply for the fact that Shadol was the most represented deck this weekend. Yeah. And, um, and then it's, it's anybody's guess, to be honest. I, I think we're going to see we're some... We're going to see, yeah, we're going to see Clifford. Some Knights, some Clifford, just a few, I guess. And then... I'm saying three rogue decks. Three rogue decks. Yep. What are you saying? I think three is a fair estimate. I'm thinking probably we may see a Noble Knight. Just yep. the one. Because in every single top 32 since Noble Knights became a thing, there has been at least just one Noble Knight is knocking that around. Is true? Pretty much. I've never seen a top 32 where Noble Knights hasn't been mentioned at least once. Usually under other. We have to... <laughs> We have to double check that. Yeah. Although three might actually be a little bit uh, too small. There, there is a good chance that we got like five to eight. Sometimes we do we have that many. Weird decks that have been doing really, really well. Yeah. Like we six samurai, bad reaction to smoke, life equalizer, or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Bad reaction burn, reficule burn, life equalizer, no might. not burn. Hat. Hat got into day two and was on a bubble yep, match. That uh, is true. So there may be some others out there that did a bit better. 
Right, and uh, we have Luigi Alici waiting already for the interview, so he's, he's come prepared, so he's going to answer some questions for us. So we're going to take a very short break, and we're going to be live uh, in just a second again with Luigi to ask him about this particular match. your gear on konami Yu-Gi-Oh! the new challengers a new generation battles for supremacy fusion ritual synchro xyz and pendulum monsters these new challengers come in every form nine cards per pack each pack sold separately konami And we're back with Luigi Alici, just as promised. Congratulations on your Thank win. You. Um, you told me that you went undefeated yesterday. Yeah. And then, since you are on the bubble, you lost the first two matches today. What's that like? Uh, I have been uh, pretty unlucky um, since yesterday I went full Swiss. Uh, and uh, today, um, first two matches, uh, yeah, I opened really bad hands. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, also, I went... Uh, after losing the first round, I went uh, against uh, um, uh, Luke Quincy, which is uh, a very good player. Very good player, uh -huh. and uh, he he also was um, uh, undefeated. Still, yesterday. still undefeated. Yeah. No, but also today, I had one loss, and uh, uh, I went against. Ah, uh, uh, you got up paired up against him. Exactly. Okay, I see. That that's really bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Um. Well, but but now you made it. You're in the top 32. Most yep. likely, I think. 100%, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, how come you're playing Burning Abyss? Why did you decide on this deck? Uh, because uh, I think uh, it's uh, the m most consistent uh, deck. Okay. Um, principally, um, we de developed the theory on uh, this meta, like uh, always uh, on, like all, all the players. Uh, okay. I think, uh, Run us through. Which it. is uh, the triangle meta. The triangle. Okay. Yeah, triangle meta, and. Uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, it's a little bit like rock paper scissors. Exactly, wh where Burning Abyss uh, wins against uh, uh, um, Clifford, uh, Clifford uh -huh. and uh, loses against uh, Shadows, uh, and um, yeah, uh, Shadows loses against uh, Clifford. Uh, okay, uh, and how did you? How do you break this cycle? Are there any cards that help you against Shadow? Okay, uh, I am uh, the build is um, pretty standard. Uh, yeah, um, we added uh, some. Uh, some cards uh, uh, which uh, uh, are good uh, against uh, the worst matchup. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, You're running Soul Charge? Uh, Soul Charge, uh, yeah. It's, no, it's a uh, it's standard card. And what about Raigeki? We uh, haven't seen Raigeki that often. Uh, Raigeki, um, 
doesn't help you so uh, so much against the uh, shadows uh, shadows yeah mm -hmm. but uh, it's really good in, in this deck because uh, uh, also uh, sometimes it happens uh, that you win uh, for uh, damages and not uh, uh, for uh, um, for a great push, not card advantage. Ex exactly. Uh -huh. And so Regeki uh, steals uh, a lot of games. Okay. That happened quite a few times this weekend? Uh, this weekend never happened, but uh, <laughs> in test... Uh, it's going to happen in the top 32. Yeah, I hope so. All right. Um, what about your side deck? We have uh, three copies of Twister, three Diffusion, two Ochama trios. Yeah. Why is Ochama trio back? Uh, we always uh, played um, um, Flying Sea against uh, the Mirror Match. Mm -hmm. But um, then um, uh, it isn't uh, that great uh, because uh, um, uh, most of uh, the times uh, they attribute it uh, um, for uh, Vanity Fiend, uh, Fiend yep. uh, Majesty Fiend. Oh, Majesty Fiend uh, yeah. Yeah. And also, um, it's uh, only one card that uh, uh, that uh, stops uh, you from combos. Uh, I think Ojama Trio is better uh, because uh, our three cards, uh, uh, three monsters uh, that uh, can't be tributed, and also um, uh, if, uh, he wants uh, to clear his, fiel his field, uh -huh. uh, he has uh, uh, to take uh, a lot of damages. Uh, in in usually you leave, uh, I don't know, maybe a Virgil uh, mm -hmm. in attack and uh, he, he can't uh, crush uh, all uh, his, uh, his tokens uh, on it uh, because uh, it's uh, 2008, uh, 2008 and okay. 2008. Okay, sounds sounds like a. And, and uh, have you have you cited it in this weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I um, I al always uh, won for Jama Trio in the mirror match okay. because uh, also we have um, um, the um, tactic when you um, we you are in uh, this Jama Trio situation. You go for a, a, a nightmare shark, uh -huh. and uh, so you you do um, four thousand damages in. in because uh, yeah, the games uh, the game uh, stalls a lot, uh, and uh, uh, you have all the time. Uh -huh. And uh, then after these uh, four thousand damages, uh, you go for uh, um, um, I don't know uh, the card uh, rank for uh, downer magician. Okay. Okay. Yep. And uh, <laughs> double downer magician turn. Uh, okay. The next turn you. This is how you win with damage again. Yeah. All right. In this match against uh, Omar Sabedin you had a situation where you had both defusion set and uh, phoenix wing wind blast exactly and he went he goes for the first fusion now why do you not activate the defusion but rather the phoenix wing wind blast what's your thinking there um, i principally my um, i activated the uh, phoenix wing wing blaster because uh -huh. um, um, if uh, he had um, 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 El Shadow Traps Fusion? No, uh, Trap Stun. Uh, trap Stun, ah, okay. Okay, I, I had uh, the Diffusion and he lost uh, his uh, Trap Stun. Uh, and uh, maybe if I draw um, other traps, uh, um, he had no, no more uh, that Trap Stun. And in the, the case, uh, uh, Trap Stun uh, uh, wasn't uh, um, that, uh, that um, bad. I mean. Uh, yeah, it, it would have been a good card, and this way you could have. Could have forced him to activate. Exactly. It. Okay. And uh, but uh, so then I realized uh, maybe it was a misplay because he set a monster and maybe it was better to uh, to keep uh, the P Phoenix uh, Wayne, yeah, P yeah, for uh, for the set Bounce monster it back and to uh, uh, yeah slow it down. One turn, uh, and uh, all right, but yeah. well, it, it worked out in the way in the end, regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, now you have made the top 32 and you had a perfect record yesterday. Mm -hmm. what is, is it for you one game at a time or do you say, now I want to win the tournament? Um, <laughs> obviously, I started uh, with uh, that um, goal. I, w I want to win uh, the uh -huh. tournament. I topped many times uh, and uh, um, yeah, never... Um, never got down to take going all the way exactly and so, so are you like top eight now or do you say okay i still want to win i want to win absolutely no no i, I absolutely want to win uh, okay today. all right so here we have a very motivated player from italy from uh, venice you said yeah yeah travis on your venice uh. yeah how long is that does it take you to get here uh we got, uh, we went um, by car uh, about, uh, about uh, two hours and okay. a half not too bad yeah no, no. all right so congratulations again. Thank, Thank you. you for being here with us for this short interview. We are going to 
go on a short break where we will have the final standings published and all the players can check their records if everything is correct because sometimes we do have um, a mix-up with either the scorekeeper made a mistake, although that's very unlikely, or um, there has a mistake on the result entry slip. This is why the players get some time to confirm the results. And once we got them all in and we waited for 10 minutes, we have the final standings. We will then perform the cut for the top 32 and continue with our coverage and bring you the live feature of the top 32, the first knockout round this weekend. All right, that's it for the time being. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. It's only going to get more exciting, so we'll be right back with the top 32. It's time to... Anything without the chips, you let us equip, but the time is coming. 